What's up? You got any reception? You got any reception or what? Hmm. Hmm. Message retracted. You retracted your message? Okay. Interesting technique. We're getting your second right here. Spell the word. Oh man. You might fucking get fired from the police force for that. They'll say they'll say that you're fucking they'll say that you're like mocking black people by purposefully misspelling words or something. Fire you. I'm uh I'm doing some late night armor experience here. So I've got I've got a uh, I've got a porphum that's uh, impregnated with uh, graphene, an A and a B part. I figured I'd do a random random fucking video here. I'm just laying out some stuff. Give me a minute. We're fixing to do a pour. I'm going to use aluminum foil as the facing layer. Now this may not this may not work at all. This may not work at all. This is based off of a totally totally pulled out of my ass science that probably isn't actually reality. But I'm doing it in my garage anyway. I was doing I was doing some pour foam to uh I'm doing, I was doing some pour, pour foam to fill up a cavity in the floor. So I had pour foam out. And I've always wanted to try this. So we're going to try it. We're going to see what happens. I guess if we want to shoot it, I guess we can shoot it with 22. That'd be quiet enough to not disturb anybody. I should probably go thicker. We should probably go thick. Let's go thick. We don't we don't want to miss it because we go too thin. So we make a thick plate. Let's see. You guys still, you guys still up in here?
Okay, now I need a top. Not too many of these for a top here. Going to need. There we go. Sure, why not? Why the fuck not? Now this is extremely scientific, okay? We basically got some two by fours and a layer of facing aluminum foil. And then we got a top layer. And then we got some, uh, some concrete board. And then we just got a tin keel of plate we're gonna throw on there. And uh, we're gonna pour some fucking foam in there and then uh, see what happens. Did you guys, did you guys hear about this? <laughs> the cops in Atlanta, they all got fired for having a, uh, they had like a, a chokehold, then a chokehold picture on their camera, like in proximity to a uh, memorial service for somebody that died of the chokehold and they all got fired. You guys hear about that? Well, like, so what happened, what happened, you know, it was like, okay, so it was like somebody got a chokehold and died, right? And that's, and that's fucked up, but that's the way that the, that's the way that fucking, that's, that's what happens when you fucking take your government and just go like, here you go, have a fucking, uh, write a check for whatever the fuck you want. You know, like that, like this is what happens. So it's not, not totally surprising. You know, I don't, I don't know why people are so surprised by this shit. Yeah, or, I'm sorry, Colorado. Yeah, no, James says it was Colorado. He's right. I'm, I'm, uh, told, I'm, mi I'm mixing up my fucking, I'm mixing up my fucking racial destabilization media operations here. There's just too many of them. I can't keep track. This could just be like a big, messy, stupid thing. These gloves were donated to me by a uh, viewer of this uh, channel. <laughs> you, you can support this channel too by sending random gloves that I will wash with fire. fuck up our test if we actually have a decent if we actually have a decent uh, result here it's going to be interesting
I don't see any reaction yet. I wonder if the graphene disables the reaction somehow. It might, it might slow it down. It just looks like a big black pancake. We'll just, we'll just kind of sit down for a second. You guys can. It's pretty incredible. It's not even going yet. So, so far, so far graphene disables the interaction of a uh, AB, AB foam. Well, no, it's expanding a little bit, isn't it? It's expanding a little bit. It's just very slow. Yeah, something something like um, science project. I want to see if, uh, let's see. Oh, sorry, I got a giant uh, metal object in the way it blocks the stretch marks in there. This body armor substrate is pregnant. Oi, oh, oh, you got, you got a permit for that black pancake, mate? Yeah, I know. I got shit reception. I'm in my fucking garage. Sorry. We can try it like that. I just turned the antenna the other way. We can see if that works. When I when I pour this, like when I do two part, you know, you get like probably I don't know twenty seconds, and then you're just gonna get like, and it's just gonna fill up. Like I can feel it. I can feel heat coming off of it with the back of my hand. I mean, it's hot. Oh shit! Ah! Ah! Don't. We can't shoot that part if we test it. I'm gonna get a napkin. So like that police, that police, that police, uh, there we go, perfect. The police firing, the fucking police firing is, uh, I don't know. It's basically like, like people don't get it. The cops don't get it. The fucking, the fucking, like the yuppies don't get it. The fucking Black Lives Matter don't get it. People don't get it. There's basically like this whole thing is just you know. So you've got you got you got some cops. They were at the uh, memorial near the memorial. Memorial location. I don't think they're like at the memorial. I don't know how close they are. Maybe they are, but they're on they're on duty, right? So they're like, oh fuck, that's not gonna work. They're on duty at the fucking at the fucking memorial. They're on duty at the memorial, and then like one of the cops that was involved in the choking, it was like a response to that. So they were like trying to cheer him up, I guess, or something. But you guys get what's going on. So so basically, like you can't. I mean, there's basically like new rules that aren't based off of law that everybody has to follow and nobody knows where they fucking came from. And they're not really, they're, they're not really, you know, like they're not based on it. They're not, they're not based on actual ethic. It's just like a command. And it's very similar to the COVID-19 mask thing, you know? So it's like the departments, the departments that are running these cops, like they have no choice but to throw them under the bus.
they have no choice, right? Because their master, who they serve, that is actually running shit, makes up the rules, whether it's ir irrational or not. And so if you fucking take a picture on your camera of doing a chokehold between you and your buddy, even though the fucking department taught you that shit in the first place, they fucking told you to do that, right? If you take a picture of you doing what you've done a thousand times in training and then arresting people, and if you do it and you take a picture and it's the wrong time or the wrong context because someone sticks sticks their face in your in your phone that apparently I guess you don't even really own because they're just going to take it from you and look at your pictures. They're just going to take your phone. They're going to look at your pictures and then they're going to decide based on their own criterion that like you can't, you can't, you can't have a job there anymore. Right. And the way they can do that is because they, they fucking pay the bill. Right. And then they're in a, in a, in a nonstop effort to widen that circle of influence. as far as possible. As far as fucking possible. And to extend it into everything from your own personal life and business so that you can't even escape. So like, you know, eBay runs commercials all the time telling people like, Oh, you should just make a fucking eBay business because that's like so much easier than everything else. You don't have to do all the, you know, storefront, all the, all the fucking licensing and the fucking city council license and all. Don't do any of that. Just have an eBay store. Then eBay tells you the rules. They tell you what you can sell. They tell you what you can't. Right? The fucking police department that you go to work for, that's the state. They tell you what you can and what you can't do. It's not based on the Constitution. It's based off of somebody that doesn't have public accountability. And the rules don't have logical deduction because they're not the same between people. They're dictated by whatever the king wants. And it doesn't matter if it's not the same one week to the next. It doesn't matter at all. And people will do it. People will do it. They'll, they'll have to do it because the whole thing, the whole, your whole world is swallowed up by this beast that you made. And it's trying to get more. It's trying to go into, into every, every nook and cranny that it can possibly get its fingers in. It's trying to impinge itself into. So you can't get away from it. I didn't, I didn't see anything about the proprietarian protests. It also sounds fake to me. Like all these people, all these people are polishing brass in the Titanic. No, it's not fucking homemade speed. Come on. We, we don't need any homemade speed. We have fucking grizzly winter cut long green. Long green. Long cut. Winter green long cut. Winter cut long green. We got fucking, we have fucking grizzly winter cut long green, baby. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure. So, so basically, uh, revolutionary movements. Revolutionary movements. 
So if they're actually getting steam and like not doing anything radical, like let's say they're not doing anything that's like radically fucking challenging the system in a way that's never been done before. And when you see it, you're like, holy fuck, this is fucking different. You know, which you can obviously see, which then if you saw that, whatever that would be, whatever the technique or procedure would be, or the concept, whatever that concept would be, it would be readily apparent why people would be interested in it, right? And that would then that would explain why it becomes widespread, like why people buy into it, you know? It would self-deduce. It would be self-evident. If a movement does, is not radical and it's just like fucking gaining ass in, in like notoriety and shit, there's only one reason that happens, and that's because money gets poured into it to happen. So then the fucking logical extension is, okay, if this is having money poured into it, where does the money come from? How does this thing sustain its lifeblood? And if it's not sustained by like a, like a profit model within the economic system, then that means that it's a fucking investment and they're hemorrhaging money into it. You know, in terms of, in terms of the mathematics, they're hemorrhaging money. Like they're, they're losing money to invest it into the, the idea, the movement, so that it stays alive and draws in people by its, you know, peripheral money that flows into society and all the things that it buys, like airtime and fucking advertisement and propaganda and all that shit. So then the logical extension is, who is the person that's funding it? Who is funding it? And then it's always the same thing. Always the same thing. It never stops. And, and so propertarianism, you know, like, I don't really know what that is, but somebody was talking about the other day in the stream. And it's based around property. Well, like, in the present system, you don't have any fucking property. So, not really, right? You have, you have property if it's convenient. Like, if it's going to keep you from fucking putting heads on a stick, they'll say that you have property on a little stamp that you pay a tax for. But all that shit, like property rights are already fucking accounted for in the Constitution, which isn't being followed, which everyone is mandated to follow in any kind of legitimate legal system that would claim to be the government. They're, they're obligated to follow it, yet they don't at all. And then so it makes you ask, like, why, why would you expect anything different of this new system that they're purporting to attempt to introduce? Right. The way that you have a change has to be fundamental. It has to be fundamental in terms of like, in, in terms of putting power with human beings and recognition and having a reciprocal of uh, like the awareness that anything that attempts to take away that power is an enemy power, regardless of what kind of name tag, hello, my name is name tag they're wearing, right? Whether it be government or person or private interest or bank or whoever or a philosopher, right? No matter who it is and no matter what story they tell you, when they come to have and why you need to pay them for it, that should designate them as your enemy. And that's kind of a, now as long as your as long as your dissemination of property and the way that people hold it is, you know, free, then that's pretty sound. You know what I mean? That's pretty sound. If if everything else is on the up and up, then that's pretty sound. But we, we kind of already have that with the Constitution. Well, the, so Whiskey Tango says, so you can't just have land and try to live off it and be self-sufficient. The government has the government has to get 
what does this say? The government has to, needs their cut from doing nothing. Well, the government does a whole lot. They, they provide the conduit for world government to impinge its dick into every facet of your fucking existence to, to enshroud you in a, in a head cage of fucking tyranny that you can't escape from. That's what they do. They're not doing nothing. They're very active in spending your, it's not even money. Like it's not, it's the money's not real and the system isn't accountable to units. And so there's not really any money. So they're not spending money. They're basically just counting you as head, as a head of cattle, as a placeholder for, you know, it, it's just a, it's just a fucking share. Like you know, they're, they're shareholders and you are the share. And then they derive power from that. But limited by the system, it's not like it's not like individuals are out there like, you know, like there is no capitalism. It's not like individuals are out there just hauling ass in power and capital matters. Yeah, and pro property tax was really early on, too. States started doing property tax like immediately. Well, see, it's not so whiskey tango. It's not. It's not. It's not a matter of uh, like you can't. You know, like it's it's a straw man to say like you can't just try to do your best and you know have a natural life and living. They're gonna come after you. It's like, well, you can't. You know, like they won't let you fucking like you. I mean, unless you had unless you had four hundred acres that were undisturbed of old forest, then you could talk. We could talk about just like you have a spot that you have that's land, and then you can completely survive off of it and take your chances. But most land out there, like if you get land, it's not going to be 400 acres. It's going to be, you know, if you're fucking lucky, 10 acres. And then, you know, you're probably just going to have fucking grass, you know. So it's like you're going to need to bring shit in. Well, to bring shit in, you're going to have to have a fucking car, right? You're not going to be like getting a fucking paramotor and tape, bringing two by fours to your property with that. You need a fucking vehicle that you can load shit up on and take it to your property to build shit you're gonna have to you're gonna have to fucking get seed and fucking and fucking uh, seedlings and shit to plant for trees and you're gonna have to all do all that shit and then as soon as you as soon as you get in the car now it's like you're subject to social security you're subject to a fucking driver's license you're subject to property tax on the vehicle you're subject to, and this isn't even including the property tax on your property or the fact that you have to have a fucking driver's license to have that it's just like this this completely inundated system that ties into itself and just goes on forever and ever, you know, for no reason at all, other than that it doesn't want to relinquish any control and it doesn't want to give any angle for that to be possible. So it just self reinforces in every possible manner to make it so that you can't fucking get away from it. You know what I mean? And, and you can't even like, you can't even fucking be homeless unless somebody, unless somebody's like, yeah, you can just stay in my yard on my personal property that I'm going to do all the bullshit for and you don't have to do it. I'm going to let you stay here. You can't even fucking be homeless and have a, like all the people, all the people that are homeless are just on granted land that they're squatting on, you know, like tent cities and shit. It's just like, that's just land that nobody wants to take the time to fucking drive the homeless people out. And so they're like, okay, I guess homeless people can stay here. And then they make it look like it's some kind of philanthropic, you know, <laughs> philanthropic effort the reality was that like the homeless people got kicked out of everywhere else until they found a place that's so shitty that nobody gives a fuck about and then they amassed there and there were so many of them that it was such a like you know a sight because if you have like one homeless guy squatting and it's like easy to just you know you can go like shoot him if he doesn't want to leave or whatever if you got like 500 to a thousand homeless people congregated in one area that nobody gives a fuck about and so nobody even goes there and so they didn't know there were 500 homeless people there they just kind of ended up there by natural selection. When you look at that kind of site, then you're like, uh, you know, now, now it's just to be like, how do I remove these people without 
looking like really bad. If you're a politician or like a mayor or something like that, you look kind of like inhuman, right? And so it's e easier and more beneficial to someone that's in the system by by and they put like some put some fucking flower like a pot of flowers out there and get a fucking you know get a fucking soup kitchen built next to it so they can walk into the soup kitchen. Which ends up just being paid for by your taxes and as fraud waste and abuse typically after enough time to where somebody starts generating profit out of it. So it's just, you know, like there's just no end, you know, like you're pretty much the freest thing you can get is if you can go hide somewhere and nobody knows that you're there. So they just don't, they just don't know that you're there. And then you can uh, like fuck off as long as you're undetected, which people do. People do that. People do that in like uh, Utah and Idaho and Montana and shit in Alaska. Just because it's so, it's so rugged that, you know, you can't get bureaucrats up there. I'm sure it's not done yet. How slow that shit was going. Can't can't be done. Can't be finished. More acetone. well that's the whole idea the whole idea about the forest is that you use you use the oh shit we're stuck hang on you use the current system as it is It's just a pancake. Oh, that's not over at all. It's not even hard. Definitely, we definitely didn't get enough expansion. I guess I need to do another one with less saturation. But that was the first time I'm go. That was the first time I'm going. This seems to let let us really, really good frisbee. That's what we're. That's what I was trying to make. Fantastic. Get this shit out of the way. Probably let that cure overnight and then come back and see if it's hard as fuck. Right now it's too soft. I know it's not, I mean, it's not gonna fucking, it wouldn't stop a wet noodle. But, you know, I'll wait and see if it cures if it, and then if it's like hard and I come back to it later. Yeah, grafting can work. Uh, like, particularly if it's like a native, if it's like native fruit. If you got native fruit, then it can work. A lot of times, grafting, you know, introduces vulnerabilities in trees. Fuck, I just, I just spit grizzly winter cut on my arm here. Jack, Jack Sparrow thinks I'm wrong about epoch times. Change my mind. Okay, sure. What, what do you, what do you want me to change your mind on?
What are we changing your mind on here? Oh, so Kevin doesn't want me to talk about Epoch Times. He's he's so sick of it. Jack Sparrow says, are, are they really in bed with the Jews and CCP? Is that your contention? Well, so, so when we talk about CCP, that's almost, it's almost like a straw man. I have to be very careful, right? So the government of China and the CCP isn't exactly what it appears. When people just look at China as like the government structure. Now, China, the people are pretty homogenous. But out of that group, you have the element that is within the government. And then you have like the private industry sector, like pretty much anybody that can be influenced by money that is corruptible can then have influence on the society and guide it into destruction, right? And so, like, China is basically in a position where, China is basically in a position where they, like, they still have strong cultural and racial homogeneity, which makes the nation very strong and difficult to crack. But at the same time, they are generationally giving into uh, international finance. It was it was kept off for a long time by their communist system from the perception of people, which is like like as soon as the pub as soon as your population accepts um, like financial control is the uh, is the system, you know, like foreign financial control is how your system runs and that's okay, then you've lost. Like you, you've lost any kind of like control over society. Like society can no longer control itself all the way down to the family unit. You then become purely in the hands of economics, become your religion, they become your like everything. So like the way that the Chinese did communism was a little bit different than Russia. So they would like, you know, they would have the, uh, you know, they, they permit, international finance to come in there and to you know like on the industrial level they permit them to dictate terms and shit on things relating to economics and then they have like a show that they give to the Chinese people where it's like we have this CCP government that is very strong and like in control and like we have communism right but it's kind of like a, it's almost like a firmament layer, like everything above the firmament, firmament, which is where the money comes in. So like the top level of the CCP, they're not really like representing any kind of Chinese interests. It's just like, you know, whoever is there, I would assume that if it's Chinese, you know, if it's Chinese, which it obviously is at the top levels of Chinese government, as the Chinese interface with international finance, they're probably like, you know, I don't know. They're either they're either they're either like hard, hardcore nationalists that are that are um, realistic about the the situation, so they're not gonna like you know they're not gonna try to fight something that isn't possible to win. You know, like if it's not if it's gonna destroy them, and they're just gonna re get replaced by somebody who will play ball. Then they'll then they'll fake playing ball. So it's either that or it's somebody that doesn't give a fuck, and they're just like, "Yep, money." It's either those two things. It's tough to say. I don't know enough about Chinese culture to say which one it is. This is just like a logic deduction based off of what I understand. So that's the CCP. So CP, CCP is real in terms of how the Chinese perceive it. It's not real in terms of like its independence or autonomy. Because because it's like once it gets the money into the government, into the system, they could theoretically do whatever they want with it to a degree. Of course, they're going to have dictations from um, central banks that are that are like giving them gold and shit. They're going to have dictations, right? Because they're not just going to give them a bunch of gold for no reason. Their commerce, once the money is injected into their commerce, they can kind of do whatever they want. And so uh, it's not really... You know, it's not, it's like not, it's not a fucking autonomous government, the CCP. So that's first of all, right? 
The Epoch Times is filled with Jews. They're absolutely like pretty much the only people there. That's it. Are we breaking up or something or what? Okay, sorry. Here, I'll go to my. I'll go to the fucking. I'll go to the fucking control command control center. Let's see if it's any better. Let's better take take the riffle. <clears throat> All right, so we had some breakup. I'm gonna move positions and then we'll, we'll see what we can do. I guess I am gonna need keys. Sorry about that. Gotta be kind of quiet. I see it's all the way back. Yeah, you fucking the fucking guns and uh, the fucking guns and the fucking uh, bullets and shit. I mean, you see, that's why that's why I put that's why I put the fucking. I don't know if you can see. Can you see a nip? Is that a nip? Oh, there you go. There's my nip. I can't even put the, uh, like on, on the, on the thumb of this video. I put that on there because I was just, somebody, somebody sent me a text. Somebody sent me a text and they were like, they were like, hey, what do you think about these? They sent me an Atlantic, Atlantic Arms, um, Listing for a fucking sold out American made Rami kit gun that was like a th over it was over a thousand dollars. It was like eleven hundred bucks or something. And I and I answered him. I was like, "U.S. made Rami kit AK is over a thousand dollars." I guess the apocalypse has started. I just had the AK the closest. I just grab it because it's closest. Sorry, I'm getting a little snack because my belly was fucking growling. I did a bunch of. I, I was work, work. I work all the time. Today I was doing like concrete work. I mean, for me, I was working for me, not for somebody else. I poured. I poured a flight of concrete stairs. Which is pretty cool. Yeah, there's probably not a lot of ammo right now. Which is pretty which is which is pretty impressive considering that like the gun industry and ammunition and shit like that are one of the few industries that is that maintained in the United States. Like 
practically other than like steel case import you're you're in like fioki and shit most of your ammunition is domestically produced yeah they are ridiculous they're totally ridiculous people should have been on the people should have been on the ak or the ar wave when they had a chance i mean I mean, there was, you, you just went through a decade of like the cheapest fucking, I mean, ARs surpassed AKs. They, they switched positions in terms of like how expensive they are. That's insane. Yeah. I'm sorry about ammo. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I guess I need to, I guess I need to like, if I shoot, only shoot like a couple of rounds and just save what I got. Nobody's getting any fucking, nobody's getting any ammo. I don't have any pistol ammo anymore. All my pistol ammo is my like defensive shit. I've shot all my fucking training ammo, so I'm not shooting any pistol anymore. Dry, dry fire practice is where it's at. I mean, to me, it just seems like it's it, to me. It just seems like a, an opportunity to fucking get into ammunition business and just not not do an FFL. To be honest, and not pay any taxes. Well, the good thing is, the good thing is, you probably won't go through a ton of rounds in the apocalypse. That's the good news. Like, if you got, if you got a K, if you have a K, I mean, you can shoot that in training, right? Like, you're gonna shoot that in training. But if you're actually, if you're actually hitting, like, if you're actually in a in a gunfight, hitting things, you're not just like shooting randomly for no reason at all. You can shoot very few rounds. Yeah, so sounds like a good opportunity to get into smelting, which by the way, which by the way, I wanted to, uh, yeah, 22 is actually great. I wanted to, uh, I really like to do a Syngas, a Syngas uh, forge for melting uh, metal stock. Is twenty two is twenty two available right now? Yeah, don't get the fucking license. Don't get the fucking license. Let them come and kill you. Make a big stink about it. Sweet, twenty two's ram. Whatever happened? Whatever happened to like the American? black market fucking non-licensed businesses you know people just got like especially post world war ii americans just turned into just the biggest pussies ever you know that i mean seriously right like who gives a fuck about like why would you even want to pay the whole the the notion is hilarious when people that act like they're patriotic, talk about taxes, like you you need to pay your fair share. Like, why the fuck would you want to pay any taxes at all? Like, you know where the fuck they're going. They're fucking, they're fucking going. You know where your taxes are going? They're, they're fucking recirculating into fucking doing destabilization ops on your country and, and sending your boys overseas to go fight wars in a circle around Israel. That's, that's where your fucking taxes are going. And they're fucking hurt people that aren't listening to world government. That's where your fucking taxes are going.
why would so so why would anybody you know why would anyone at all if you're a patriot you shouldn't want to pay taxes why why would you want to why would you want to pay taxes when your taxes go to destroying your constitution imagine you know what i mean like th think about it this way think about it this way in fucking In fucking Minnesota, or where I don't even know where it is, wherever they set up the fucking Chaz, the Chaz fucking free fire zone, they didn't have enough balls to stop them. Like, what do you think is going to happen when you get if you had now if you're one guy in a shop, they can stop you. But if you're like a group of people in a community and you're doing it for your best, your own best interests, and if you can articulate why it's your in your interest. And then you have a little bit of backup. Like they're not gonna fuck. They're not gonna fucking come get you. They're gonna try. They're gonna make an example out of somebody, and then it'll get plastered all over the news. They're not gonna be able to, you know, they're not gonna be able to muster support for it um, as a, as like a, a campaign. There are legal ways to not pay taxes. Yeah, you can suck their dick. I mean, seriously, you know what I mean? Like the, the facade that the facade that the U S government is patriotic and gives a fuck about the, you know, it's not that they don't give a fuck. It's not that they want to destroy America. It's that the government is not a person. It's a fucking structural entity. And it, it, it doesn't have the same parameters of ethic as like a human being. It's a totally different ballpark and they're not in fucking control because they're not in fucking control of the money. So they're not, you know, like for a while they weren't in control of the money, but they were just, uh, you know, placated to, to be able to like do what they want and have a, have somewhat of an interface, like a, like an accountability interface with the public. That's completely fucking gone now. It's totally gone. Other, other than on, other than on the local municipal level where police live in the actual community and it's a, it's a small enough locality that, you know, everybody knows each other. That's about the only, and, and even then they still play, they still play these fucking, Stupid fucking games. We're going to have to throw on a lipper here. Sorry about that. Well, drugs, I mean, drugs, I think the, I think the, the war on drug stuff, I believe, is, is an excuse to roll out active measures into, you know, into TTPs, equipment, shit like that. I don't think that they're like, obviously the South American drug trade is completely tied into international commerce. You know what I mean? Now, if you're talking about, if you're talking about uh, like local people, like people growing marijuana and selling marijuana and trafficking marijuana and stuff or whatever it is like that, that are not dealing in drugs, um, you know, like if they're producing, if they're, if they're in production, then it's the case of like the police are going, the police are going after them because it's, it's, you know, it's societally supported. Like people are on board with that, but it's also like they're bucking the systems. And then every, you know, a lot of people are on board with that too, with going after them. But in terms of the, like the national effort, I mean, now you're talking about like imported drugs, mostly from South America or from uh, China and the Middle East, and the uh, like. That shit is that shit is fucking government sponsored.
Yeah, I've talked about fucking Jorgensen multiple times. It's on the prior stream. You don't you don't have any fucking you don't so here let me let me answer it this way. Let, let me put it this way. If you're if you're actually looking to politics to the political system and its and its uh boundaries that are necessitated in the present era, then it's like you're fundamentally you're fundamentally in my opinion, you're fundamentally misunderstanding, misgaging the seriousness of the situation and how far, how, how far this thing goes. Like you, you don't have anybody, like anybody that's running for president is not going to be independent at this juncture. They're not going to be independent. And if they were, if they were somehow fucking independent and could muster the money to run, then you know, they're just going to be like a fucking split ticketer or they're going to be, you know, there's going to be some kind of tactical consideration of why they were invested in. But they're not going to be really fucking independent, right? And if they were, and if they were, they're going to get fucking eaten up and, and they're going to get fucking chewed the fuck up and spit out. You know what I mean? Like they don't stand a fucking chance if they're actually independent. Don't stand a chance. Unless they're for real and they break into the system and they're fucking at that point, they're basically just, I mean, it's just like a time bomb, you know, like if you had somebody, if you had somebody that was, uh, if you had somebody that was actually legit running for the presidency, what it would look like is basically they get on camera and they'd be like, you are all my enemies, you know? And, and then it would just be like, I'm going to raise an army to fucking, to fucking take the, the United States. So that's what it would look like if anybody was <laughs> legit. It would look like that. It'd be like extremely nerving to see. It'd be like a very like, oh fuck, this is no good. Conventional model. Like I'm talking about in the in the model of politics that we use. That's what it looked like. No, I don't think Trump is independent. I think that's he's about as far from independent as you can possibly get. Trump said Trump said when he was running on the campaign, he literally said that he literally said at one of his campaign rallies that he was considering auditing the Fed. Like just just to fucking just just to fucking get like the the uh, fucking Ron Paul people like, whoa, oh my goodness. He's gonna audit the Fed. Wow. You know, if the fucking, the fucking, the fucking campaign, the fucking campaign promise of a real politician would be that they're going to, they're going to fucking tactically burn down all the beds at once, simultaneously. That, that would be, that would be saying he was actually independent. Like that's. That's what I was trying to tell you guys. I was trying to tell you, like, you'll be able to, if there was an actual, you know, like the boog is fake, right? Like you guys understand the boog is fake. It's a, it's a fucking, it's an op to fucking start a conflict. They're basically saying, they're basically just trying to roll up all the threat elements in, in the United States. All the people that are actually dangerous in the United States that could fight world government. They're trying to round them up in the label of boog. Whoa. There's a lot of bugs in there. Oh well. Um, they're basically putting them under the label "boog" so then they can fucking contain them and kill them off. And that's that's the reason I don't advocate violence because you guys don't stand a chance if unless you're like unless you're super fucking smart. In which case you you're not gonna be on YouTube and you're not gonna be like using cell phones at all. You're gonna have by now you would have an entire you know, network set up that that you know what I mean you, you're already you're you're gonna have all this you, you that that's not the case like people 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 are not they don't understand how tight this cordon is and so they don't understand that like you know basically all that the super state has to do is align 
your resistance to world government as a threat to the United States and to the American public, which they can very easily do because they have control of everything, like all projection of information they have control over. And so all they have to do is align any kind of effort as, as a threat to the people of the United States, and the people in the United States will believe it. As long as, as long as that magic spell hasn't been broken, the people will believe it and they'll support them killing you. And that's why I don't that's why I don't think the violence is the strategy in terms of a practicality. Now, the other reason the other reason that violence is not a good idea is because it's wrong to kill people. Like even bad people, right? Even bad people. The, you know, like if you can avoid like life is precious and you shouldn't kill people. Now, the way that conflicts work is that p human beings get maneuvered because they're not paying attention. They get maneuvered into situations that take a very long time to maneuver to where it goes into like open warfare and then it becomes a formality by whatever the technology and TD TTPs are of the day. They get maneuvered into it. But if they were smart. Like if, if human beings were intelligent enough, which apparently we're not at this point, but if we were intelligent enough, like you should, you should be able to like, let's just look at, let, let's, let's take like a practical consideration, right? Let's take the war in Afghanistan, which we've been at, you know, fucking 20 years now. Okay. It's a 20 year long war. It's the longest war in us history. People that are Afghanistan vets often like complain about how game the war is and how it feels like that, you know, it's just, it's like fucking international cops with mortars and fucking long range rifles, basically machine guns. But they, people, you know, people that were in Afghanistan will often complain about how it feels like they're fighting with their hands tied behind their back. And it's just like a really stupid thing. And it is, it's really stupid. It's, it's not these wars, these wars aren't, meant to win they're not like that kind of war because that's not the purpose right it, does, it doesn't even have any kind of benefit for the united states at all it's just a fucking hemorrhaging of your blood and your resources and your honor to the rest of the world right like they're fucking burning all of your reputation logically if you look at it at the number of people that have deployed to afghanistan imagine if all those people were like freed of their slave mind at birth. And so they, they, they thought freely and had like free association. And let's say the conflict was actually worth something, right? Let's say there was actually like somehow logically you could deduce that like it, it was the right thing to do, which usually generally isn't the case for war, but if it was like the most effective thing to do on both, on both the, the ethical consideration and the tactical consideration, wouldn't you do better if everybody was operating independently as a nation to conduct the war rather than an, as a, as a dumbass nation state, like, wouldn't it be better if like, you know, if it was actually important enough to fight Afghanistan, do you think it'd be more effective to deploy like 2 million troops for like short periods of time? Or do you think it'd be more effective to just like, you know, we have to take down Afghanistan and then you'd have like American citizens and their, patriotic duty like taking it upon themselves to just move to afghanistan and live there all the time they'd move there and they'd use their house like a fucking outpost you know they'd they'd fight the war in a way that was completely unconventional where they weren't like limited to uh you know the the fucking diplomatic and and bureaucratic shit that the military is limited to they, they'd like analyze what was actually going on in afghanistan what the blood flow was and they cut it off. It looked completely different. Right? But the point of that is what I'm saying is that wars aren't really to win. I mean, they are to win, but not for you, not for the people. They're for who runs the war and who invests in it. And it ain't the fucking people. I'll tell you that right now. And so that kind of concept of like war isn't even isn't even on isn't even in the register in people's mental register they just don't even think of it like that Whoa. they fucking 
rat. I think there's a rat in my car. Yeah, it's it's just all fake. It's all fake. It's all fake. But it's not even in your interest to fight war, right? Like, you're fucking... You're, you're fucking... Your interest is your family, right? Your interest is, is your family and your security and your autonomy and being able to efficiently use your brain to discover, like, what your purpose is in life, Right? That that is your prerogative, and then you know, if we were doing that, why would we even be fighting anybody in the first place? Yeah, I know. I'll look at it later. I'm too tired right now. Well, aren't they trimming their teeth down? No shit. Soy wire. Soyota. I like that. So this is just another bullshit stream. I was bored. I did an armor thing. It didn't work. Yet. All right, I got to go. I got to go to sleep. You guys have a good night.